Hi again. So in this video, we're going to summarize the results of our experiment and simulation from uh, of sampling distributions of proportions. So remember, we had this question of were you born in Oregon? And our population had a population proportion of 0.625 or 62.5% of the population was born in Oregon. And then we did samples first some manual random samples from the bucket and then we did a simulation so that we could do a lot more sim more um, samples quickly so our original population we had our population proportion you can think of it that as the true proportion letter p equals 0.625 and then we did a bunch of different sample sizes, right? And for each size, we, we repeated the random samples over and over again until we got a full distribution of random samples so that we can understand what the distribution of random samples looks like. So we did n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 5, and then we also did n equals 25. I think we did 50 and 1500 something like that. So for the two and then the distribution of the sample proportions, for two, three, and five, those were pretty skewed. They were not normal. But when we took bigger sample sizes, these were normal. They looked like they had a normal distribution, okay? So let's generalize this a little bit. What happens in general to the sample proportion as the sample size gets larger? Well, remember how we saw that that average in the middle, it stayed the same every time. So this is really the average of our sample proportions. So the mean, or I'll say the average, of all of our sample proportions was equal to or very close to the true population proportion. Okay, and as it gets larger, it's only just going to get closer and closer to the population proportion. And then what in general happens to the sample standard deviation as the sample size gets larger? Now this particular app didn't show us the number for the standard deviation, but we could see that the scale was narrowing in. We were getting a, a narrower and narrower distribution. So as the, um, as the sample size gets larger, the standard deviation gets smaller. Okay, so we will have a formula for that so we can actually um, do our calculations. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you, and that has to do with the sample size condition. Remember on our uh, quantitative uh, variable and we calculated means, we saw that we had to get n greater than or equal to 30, 25 or 30, but we're using 30 because that's what our book says, um, greater than or equal to 30 to get a normal distribution. Well, one thing that's different about proportions is it's not quite that cut and dried. So I want to show you something. We did 0.625, and um, so when let's start with a sample proportion of 0.625. When we um, looked at our original um, sample sizes, like n equals 2, 3, and 5, this was skewed to the left. Now, 
not super skewed, but a little skewed to the left. Okay, now I want to go to another one and I want to try, I'm going to hit edit proportion. I'm going to put in 0.5. I want to show you what happens. And let's see, what's my n? Oops, I better go back small. Two. Well, actually, it's hard to tell anything with two. Let's do five. So I'm generally going on to thousands. I'm up to 5,000 right now. This one I have to be kind of gentle with. Okay, that looks pretty symmetric, doesn't it? 0.5 is right in the middle, and this is symmetric. So this is just like when we looked at binomial distributions. If you put in a P of 0.5, you get a symmetric, uh, what looks like a bar graph or histogram. So um, when you put in exactly 0.5, it's gonna be symmetric. Um, you know, this is symmetric around because we're only using five. Um, so I'm not getting this middle value here. Um, but it is symmetric around the center. Okay, so let's write that down. So when P equals 0.5, even with N equals five, which is a really small sample size, that's symmetric. And then it says try point 0.1. So that would be if only 10% of our population was in Oregon. Whoops, wrong window. Okay, so let's change our uh, proportion. Go to edit proportion to 0 0.1. Let's see what happens. Wow, look at the left here. You can see the average is 0.1, but this is very skewed to the right, and that's because only 10% of the population um, were born in Oregon, so we're much more likely to get a smaller uh, sample, smaller uh, sample proportion than a larger one. So, P equals 0.1 and N equals 5. That's very skewed to the right. Okay, so what you can see from this is it depends on the value of P. So we can't just give a simple answer for N. It depends on the value of P. Now, this 0.5, it's going to stay symmetric, just like when you start with a normal distribution, it's always going to be normal. This starts out symmetric, it's always going to be symmetric. Um, the more skewed it is, so the closer it is to 0 or 100%, the more skewed it is, the higher n you're going to need to get a symmetric distribution. But you can get there, you can get to a normal distribution. So let me try um, point one, let me try 20. Okay, see how that's getting closer to symmetric, but not symmetric yet. So let me just summarize that. N equals 20, it's less skewed. Let's try a hundred. Do, do sample size one hundred. Okay, there we go. That looks much better, doesn't it? Still looks like it might be slightly skewed. Oh, now it's getting a little better. Okay, so um, my point here is for the sample size condition, 
the value depends on a combination of n and p. We can't just give a straight can't just give a straight answer on this one. So when we did n equals 100, that looked um, symmetric or normal. Okay, so what we're going to see in the next video, it's all written out, but I'll just summarize it here so you know it goes with this too. It's called the success failure condition. And someone figured out how to summarize this in terms of n and p. So if n times p is greater than or equal to 10, and n times q is greater than or equal to 10. Remember, q is the complement of p, so q equals 1 minus p. If one's 60, the other's 40. If one's 30, the other's 70. They both have to be greater than or equal to 10. So that covers if you're skewed to the right and also skewed to the left. So what we do is we test that. And if those are both true, then our sample size condition is met. In this case, it's called success failure condition. So when I did the 0.1 times 10, n times p was 100. Sorry, when I did 0.1, uh, when I did a sample size of 100, 100 times 0.1, that should be 10, right? Ten percent of a hundred is ten. So that worked. That was greater than or equal to ten. And then in this case, that's the smaller one. So n times q is definitely going to uh, be met because that's 0 0.9. So that's going to be 90. So we just check both of them, um, and we say that's greater than or equal to 10, and that's greater than or equal to 10. Now that's really the bare minimum. You could see it still looked maybe slightly skewed. This is the bare minimum that you could do and use the normal distribution for your calculations. Okay, so that's a summary of our sampling distribution for a yes-no categorical variable, a sample proportion. And on the next page, we will look at the properties and we'll see, we'll do some examples. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.